Tucker Carlson and comedian Theo Vaughn not happy with Speaker Mike Johnson's America Second approach. Let's watch. Speaker of the House, who I know is a nice guy from your state, the new Speaker of the House comes in, and the first thing he does is issue a statement on behalf of a foreign country. That's the most important thing. I'm, and I'm not even against the statement, but right. I'm just saying, like, what bigger statement does that make? That's him, Mikey Johnson? Yeah. And he's the speaker? He is. And Praise God. But I mean, it, damn, Mikey. He's a nice guy, and I'm not against him, but I'm just saying, like, if you think the welfare of another country is the most important thing for you as the, one of the leaders of our country, third in line to the presidency, you have lost the thread, son, because it's not. Nothing is more important for the leaders of our country than our country and how its 350 million people are doing. So I was enraged by that. And people are like, oh, are you for Hamas? Of course I'm not for Hamas at all. I'm for America, actually. I shouldn't even have to answer that question. Yeah. Are you for Israel or Hamas? I mean, obviously I'm for Israel over Hamas, but, but that's irrelevant. I'm for America. And no one even asked that. And I feel deep resentment about that, that the concerns of this country yeah, are of no are, concern. Right, right. It feels like our concerns don't even matter they anymore. They don't matter. That's why it makes me wonder, are we just a shell company for Israel? Are we just a shell company for China? Like, are, where, where are we anymore? Like, are we just... Well, there are a lot of people... Now, this goes to the argument that Tucker Carlson's absence from Fox News really does mean that there is nobody taking this position uh, on the most popular right network in the country, even though I think it rightly reflects where a ma majority of the population is. Yes, while he had that perch at Fox, I think he served as a very useful reminder to a lot of establishment Republicans, a lot of Republican politicians, that you, know, you may be talking to um, other powerful people and national security people and lobbyist groups and all that, but I have people watching my show. And people watch my show because they like what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is, why don't you ever talk about what Americans need and what, and what U.S. national security should be? Why are you so focused internationally and elsewhere? And Tucker had the biggest show, the biggest show period, and the biggest show from a conservative standpoint on television. And he was, he was different on this subject. He was different from all of the rest. And he was exerting a useful pull on them to be more, um, to be more in keeping with an understanding of a less interventionist foreign policy, a foreign policy that's just focused on what's good for the United States, that's good for the people who pay for the national security of the United States, which is the taxpayers. Um, you know, the, the, I, I keep bringing up the fact that we're paying for the Ukrainian war effort. Europe's not paying for it. Germany's not paying for it. The UK's not paying for it. It's there. It's in their backyard, and we pay for it. And by we, I mean you, people watching. And I think Americans are so outraged. Tucker is clearly outraged by it. He's not, that's not performance. He's not faking that. He thinks that's outrageous. And so many people, and I don't know this, this Theo Vaughn um, uh, host, comedian, podcaster person very well. He's kind of only recently entered my, uh, my awareness, but... Um, it seems, so I don't know if he's particularly, I, I gather he's not necessarily particularly conservative or even political, but maybe, you know, like a Joe Rogan or like some, someone like that, you know, can become political and frankly can become right wing even from seeing the lack of attention paid to actually American issues by elites, certainly in both parties. Yeah, it would be an odd thing to become right wing because you're upset about a segment in which Tucker Carlson is criticizing the newly elected Republican Speaker of the House. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I mean, this is this is a yeah. right on right kind of uh, discourse that's happening yeah. right now. And the most strident, vocal and nu numerically right. significant portion of people who are condemning U.S. involvement in the war in Israel right now, in Gaza right now, is most certainly on the left. Um, there is, as a, by my count, exactly one uh, presidential candidate in all of the races on both sides of the aisle uh, and outside of the two-party system or within that uh, has a strong condemnation of the actions of Israel against Palestine, who wants to cut funding and who wants to end the occupation of Palestine, and that's Cornel West. I don't think even Marianne Williamson, even though she, I think just recently yesterday called for a ceasefire, would go that far. And certainly there's no one on the right, right. side of the aisle um, who would take that stand. Right, on, in terms of that. But there is, in terms of the—right, and Tucker 
acknowledges there. He's not taking some position in the actual conflict. What he is taking a position on is why the conflict should matter to U.S. taxpayers, U.S. the U.S. government. Not that it shouldn't matter at all, but why should it matter the most? Why is it the thing that matters the most to them, rather than what's going on here? And what's going? And the Ukraine was the same story. So the criticism being made of the speaker. I mean, you're right. It's the, of the Republican speaker, and it's. I mean, this, sometimes this is not ideolo- This is, or it's an ideology that is not confined to a narrow right-left framing, where there are a lot of people on the right who agree with a lot of people on the left about um, Americans' foreign policy priorities having been really having been bad for a number of reasons. Maybe the left people are saying because they're anti-humanitarian and because they're resulting in a lot of suffering and death. And maybe the right people are saying, and they're not making us safer, and they're not enhancing our status in the world in a way that makes America better off. And in fact, they're wasting a lot of money. And also, some of this is totally superfluous and resulting in civilian casualties that later those people will grow up to hate us and want to kill us because we did this. So there's so the question is, can there be enough of a coming together to exert pressure to change that policy? I would also just say that when we say hypothetically, why is the U.S. so invested in this? Why was the U.S. so invested in Ukraine? We raise those as kind of hypothetical questions, rhetorical questions that we don't tend to answer. But there are always answers to those questions. The, America has an idea of what its geopolitical interests are that largely around its ability to extract resources and wealth from different parts of the world that we don't have any territorial claim to. There have been newly discovered um, untapped oil reserves off the coast of Gaza that some people are asking questions about whether or not that has some some something to do with why America would be willing to now send a nuclear-armed submarine to make sure that this conflict pans out the right way and that Gazans don't end up having um, territorial control over the coast off of Gaza at any point, which may happen if there were even a two-state solution and um, self-determination for the people of Palestine. So I think that those kind of stories are going to continue to be developed as this conflict shows no signs of um, dying down soon. But I do hope that people like Tucker, who are asking these kinds of questions, start to probe broader questions about U.S. imperialism and whether the United States has had an entitlement to fight wars over oil and resources anywhere it's done so, often under the name, frankly, of fighting communism. Well, I mean, yes, but in the process, I mean, we're, we're also just, we're just, these wars are costly and are destroying resources, right? We can't tap those, the oil potential you just mentioned. It can't be tapped with people blowing each other up in the region. That's a, that's a lost resource because of the war. I mean, the wars are not, the wars themselves cost, I mean, people, people are a resource as well as um, lumber and and metal and oil and food and everything else and as we're, we're we're bombing it we're destroying it it's we're it's it's impoverishing it's not enhancing anyone's well being well um, if you if, if I mean we didn't we didn't take Trump said this right we didn't take the oil when we went to Iraq the, the that was a is, criticism he had of it if the leaked Israeli intelligent document from last week is that was has been confirmed mm-hmm. as an authentic document by Israel is any confirmation of strategy, then if you see this as a kind of a final solution where you permanently expel the population of Gaza into Egypt and claim that territory as Israeli territory, then that is a much more comfortable long-term position for Israel to be in if it is in fact interested in exploring those coastal rights. That that's the issue. Is this going to be a, a conclusion that Israel backs that makes it no longer have to manage, occupy, um, uh, oppress Palestinians in the longer term. Hmm. Well, we'll continue to follow all of that. And that does it for our show for today. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll have another show. and We'll be bringing you all the latest news of the day. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Bye-bye.